You ever wake up at a truck stop randomly in Iowa and wonder, I wonder if their coffee's any good? And then wonder, huh, I wonder what poor decision I made 300 miles ago that led me here. Being single, I don't really think a whole lot of things through non-work related. Work related stuff, especially with some of the stuff we do, you gotta dot all the I's, cross all the T's. So then that takes up like 92% of my work week, uh, making sure everything goes around the way it should. So in between then, I get to do a few little fun things. So for years, me and my dad have always wanted um, what they call old Ford High Boys. And back in 2016, we bought an old rusty one because I couldn't afford a nice one. And I lied to everyone and said, hey, it has a snow plow on. I'm gonna buy it, fix it, and use it for snow plowing, which I did do, but really I knew I was gonna restore it one day. So then we had the wild idea of one day, let's buy a two wheel drive that's rust free and put the body on our high boy. So that's been like the game plan for like four out of the five years. Okay, let's just be honest. That's been kind of the game plan one way or another to get a high boy since probably about 1992. So here we are in 2021. So yeah, delay gratification. I start texting with a guy and of all states, Colorado, about a truck. Now, the first one didn't work out, and we ended up driving five hours farther than we originally planned to get truck B, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, Monday night, start texting the guy. Hey, everything looks like a go. I'm looking at the weather. I'm looking at radar weather, traffic patterns. Everything looks clear. I'm looking at the work schedule going, wow, I think I could actually like get away for a couple of days. So, the goal to leave the yard at 9, 8.30, 9 p.m. turned out to be 3 o'clock in the morning. Kind of fitting. So then we drove from three o'clock in the morning to about what, six, seven, when we pulled off into a truck stop in Iowa and wondered if they had good coffee. Yeah. Uh, then we kept cruising, we got to Denver, everything was looking good. So originally we brought a one ton truck with a uh, trailer behind it. The goal was to pull the truck home or drive it. Both of those I was totally down with, done it in the past, love road trips. None of those went our way. So we got on the road around four this morning and we knew we had to get through the Rockies on I-76. And the only fear I had about going uh, through the morning or traveling early in the morning was kind of this, a flash little snowstorm that wasn't on any radar or any channel. When we checked uh, Colorado Department of Transportation uh, road report, it was great. There was no snow in the forecast. And as you can see, it snowed. So the back end of the truck broke loose about two miles ago. We got on the uh, nearest off ramp and we're just sitting here. So we're still sitting here. Um, being a semi driver, I uh, am a little in awe and also kind of feel a little bit of a wuss as I watch all the semis go up the hill, but uh, that's okay. Uh, we're still safe and we're still sitting here. You can kind of see here on the map uh, where we're at here and uh, all the way for about the next 10, 15 miles there is the bad weather, bad uh, road um, uh, section. So once we get through that, we should be pretty good. It's about 6.30, 6.20 and it's lightening up. It's kind of cool. We actually got the uh, sun coming up here in the Rockies and it's gorgeous. Got four tenths of a mile from the tower and the or tunnel and the back end of the truck broke loose and started spinning. The Eisenhower Tunnel, this is one of the summits and we were about four tenths of a mile from it when we pulled off. And from here on out, we descend for a while. But I talk about just not quite making it to the top. So two hours later, we're back on the road and, and the roads are nice and clean and we're back at it. Eventually got back on the road, drove another four, three to four hours through Vail. This is how you know you're a car guy and from Minnesota. Most people from Minnesota will go to Vail to go skiing or go out to the Rockies to go snowmobiling. I drive through all of that to go look at an old Ford pickup. <laughs> we eventually get there, look at the truck, turns out awesome. It's awesomely solid. I mean, it's just very, very little rust. It's an air-conditioned truck. It's the air I wanted, so we ended up buying it. The original plan was to either one, try and drive it home, or two, put it on the trailer. We, <laughs> after spinning out, going up the mountain, we decided, let's get this one shipped home. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. So we actually brought nothing back. So we went 1,200 miles and we have our first problem. Uh, you wanna demonstrate? We put the windows down because it's like 40 degrees and it felt great, but now the window doesn't wanna go up. And that's a problem because the white stuff on the mountains up there, that's called snow, which we know very well. <laughs> and uh, long story short, they uh, 
are calling for a lot of snow and cold weather on our way back to uh, Minnesota. And so we gotta try and get this up. You always need to go on road trips because it builds character. When else can you fix a window in three, five minutes or less in uh, a Harbor Freight Park? <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna carry over to some other really good life skill. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> But on the way back home, we get caught in another little freak snowstorm going down the pass. And what was the highlight of the trip? The white knuckling the steering wheel with both hands doing about 35 to 40 down the hill because it's freezing, sleeting rain and two wheel drive dually with a trailer behind me. And I'm telling him like, sorry, everyone's passing us, but this is really scary. And then we come up on the squad car. So we move over and then we look and there is 40 feet of the guardrail just gone off this mountainside. And here's the cop looking over the, over the edge like where'd he go <laughs> he's there someplace yeah. 2,000 feet down I'm sure but got back to the hotel spent the night great thought all right cool the adventure is finally coming to an end we just got to drive across the prairie right Nebraska <laughs> come on I mean it's flat <laughs> um, no big deal weather patterns looked awesome that was last night this morning we woke up we were on the road by four and what out of our 500 and some miles it was to des moines six seven whatever i think we drove all but 70 miles of that in snow and holy crap so we were commenting on the fact that like usually i know you're supposed to have hands on 10 and 2 and i almost never do because uh, i drive every day uh out of our 400 and some miles we put on today i think about 300 of them have had both hands on the steering wheel perfectly at 10 and 2 looking straight ahead, watching for taillights. Uh, luckily it didn't get worse. I've driven in worse, don't want to do it again, but as you can see in some of the pictures, holy crap, it just was 500 miles of just 40 to 60 miles an hour, watching cars and trucks veer everywhere and looking in cars in the ditch and yeah ignoring my phone because it kept ringing and i was like nope nope focusing on driving so <laughs> i'm happy i wish we had a truck on the back on the trailer uh but actually i was very relieved when we pulled over again today because we lost all visibility about 150 yards ahead of us with semis i mean it was just a club whiteout and so we pulled off into a rest stop and oh i was glad at that point i didn't have the truck on the trailer so <laughs> to be sitting here back in the yard going all right cool mission accomplished we made it nice feeling uh <laughs> it's just as funny how like 80 hours can go by and it feels like a whole different lifetime glad you came yeah glad to have made it back i'm glad we didn't go over a mountainside <laughs> <laughs> but we weren't that guardrail oh